Right, good evening, members, and welcome to the Audit and Governance Committee. And I will read out the webcast note. Please note that this meeting may be filmed for live or subsequent broadcast via the Council's internet site. At the start of the meeting, the Chairman will confirm, as I'm doing, if all of the part of the meeting is being filmed. The meeting may also be otherwise filmed by third parties with the Chairman's permission. You should be aware that Council is a data controller under the Data Protection Act. Data collecting during the webcast will be retained in accordance with the Council's published policy. Therefore, by entering the Chamber and using the lower public seating area, you are consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. Members of the public do not wish to have their image captured. They should sit in the upper council chamber public gallery area or otherwise indicate to the chairman before the start of the meeting. Right. Good evening, members. Um, apologies for absence. Well, we did have apologies for lateness from Councillor Heap, but he has just joined us. So, no need for an apology. Thank you. So, we're all present. Any declaration of interest? If anything occurs to you during the meeting, don't be afraid to let me know. But I'll take it there are no declarations of interest. Okay, the minutes of the last meeting. Are we happy with those minutes? So, I noticed you wanted a couple of changes made, which I think have been made. Are we happy with the minutes? Councillor Jennings. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, as you can see, I'm fully automated, but I don't have any minutes. The minutes aren't included in this agenda. Sarah. <coughs> can I raise oh, yes, same, please, if you want the same, 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 same issue. Yeah. Uh, consistency, we, is, the minutes aren't on the public website. They're not on the modern gov, and also they're not included as a part of the agenda where all the other papers are. Mm. And other meetings, you tend to, because it's on the agenda, minutes of the previous meeting, you actually have the minutes of the previous meeting in the reports pack. Chairman, the minutes should be, well, they were published because I got the email notification telling me that I did publish them, and they should be up on the website. Um, some committees do publish the minutes of the last meeting in their agenda. By and large, I have not done it for this committee or any of the other committees that I look after, um, as it's part of the digital member initiative. You know, we have a committee management system, the minutes are published there. If you're not getting the notification emails when I publish the minutes for this committee, then please let me know and I'll make sure you do get them. Councillor Jennings. Um, listening to what has just been said, does this go back to a situation we had with this committee probably about a year ago, mm. where I know uh, Nora Naniyakara had discussed with Democratic Services when the minutes should be um, actually published uh, on the internet? And I think it was agreed as a temporary basis that that wouldn't happen until this committee had actually approved the minutes and mm -hmm. then they would be published. However, that went against, uh, if you like, practice within the rest of the council and I asked for that to be amended and taken back to the way the rest of the council was treating its meetings and the publishings of those minutes. And I wonder if this is just a hiccup because I was told by Stephen Torts that that was now finished and the minutes would be published in the normal way ahead of this meeting. But there is certainly none on the internet because usually they come up with the agenda and the minutes will be underneath and that is not the case and it's not included in my pack at all because I wanted to actually look at some of the, uh, uh, an item in the minutes from right. last time uh, so I could raise a question this time and of course they weren't there. Right. It was, yeah, I, I did receive the minutes, that's why I didn't appreciate that you haven't received the minutes. Um, so clearly, I mean, I think it's very difficult for, to ask a committee to approve the minutes when uh, the entire membership other than the chairman uh, didn't receive them. Um, how do you want to play, with this, play this, Gary? We can defer approval of the minutes to the next meeting if that's what the committee wish. Okay, oh, well, that, that seems to me to be the sensible thing to do. And, uh, and you can get those minutes out to the members 
um, as ASAP, that would be, I'd be most grateful. Okay, so members, we are going to defer um, the approval of the minutes for November until you have all received them. <coughs> Councillor Jennings. Sorry to labour this point. Will the draft minutes therefore be published to the public in the, in the meantime and not waiting for this committee to approve them at its March meeting? Gary, I, I mean, it seems to me otherwise we're getting an awful long time from when the meeting occurred to the publishing of the minutes. Um, as far as I'm aware, Chairman, once I came back to Democratic Services, I was told to carry on as I had before, and as soon as the minutes were drafted, <coughs> approved, uh, reviewed by the officers and yourself, um, and then publish them, and that's what I've been doing. Yeah, no, that, I, I'll have to double check the website, because, I mean, if, if there's been a technical error and these minutes haven't been published, then I'll, and I can only apologise, and we'll have to make sure it doesn't happen again. Okay, well, can you come back to me on that and, uh, and keep the members informed exactly where we are with that? But at the moment, we're saying we're deferring the approval of the minutes um, because the members have not received them. And I don't think it, we, it's right that we ask them to approve something that they've not actually been privy to see. Okay. Um, well, matters arising, we, we will have to hold that as well. Um, the Audit and Government Committee Works Programme, which is on pages <coughs> five and six. Sarah, this for you. Um, I'll talk about the uh, report on effectiveness of risk management, which is due at the next meeting in March. Um, with the, your change in role of Audit Committee becoming responsible for risk management, my proposal is that at each meeting you get an update dated risk management report um, and Nick's going to talk about the Treasury management report. Um, the Treasury management report which would normally come at this time, you may recall that two meetings ago you received an update that was late. There are significant changes to our approaches to loans and the balance sheet that we want to discuss and understand more thoroughly. So the earliest it's likely to return to this committee for looking forward is in about two months' time. So we're, we're delaying the Treasury Management Investment Strategy Statement and we'll be getting report in the new form. And uh, effective risk management, we are now going to be getting a monthly um, report on that um, rather than it just being as a one-off as is here. Are we... I take it we're happy to note that. We don't actually have to do anything other than just uh, ex receive the explanation of what's actually happening. Are we happy to move on from there? Councillor Hadley, are you happy to move on? No, okay, all right, that's fine. So uh, you, were look you were looking at me quickly and I was, I was getting a bit worried. Okay, item seven. Then the internal audit monitoring report, November to January. Sarah. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'll take you through the salient points, though. So starting with item one. So if you've looked at Appendix 1, you'll see we're making really good progress with the internal audit plan. You remember this time last year we were struggling to complete it, um, but... We're in a much more comfortable position at this time. Yes. Just for noting at this moment that, it's that we're thinking of defer, deferring the infrastructure delivery plan. It was, was uh, an audit that um, was suggested at the March last year, and we were hoping that the local plan would have been approved by then, and therefore we would look to see how that was being delivered. I can't see the point of doing that audit um, until we actually do have the local plan in place. Moving uh, on to item two, so um, so the risk management uh, appendix two is just for noting at this stage, you will get at the March meeting an updated corporate risk register and we'll be asking you to, for your comments and challenge on it going forward. Since the last audit committee, we've issued four reports. Um, the first one, Recycling Management and Income Substantial Assurance. Um, there we, we identified that the risks are being well managed. 
and um, there is a really good working relationship between the council and our provider um, and uh, negotiations continue on, on the rates of pay there uh, for the recycling. Invoice payments was given substantial assurance. So this was looking at the process because purchase <coughs> orders are now centralised. They were done out in the service areas as previously found it was working really well. We used data analytics to look at the data and we did identify a duplicate payment uh, which the council is, is getting back um, and going forward the council are looking for something similar software wise so that if they can do this on a regular basis and try and identify duplicates themselves. Housing register and allocations another substantial assurance audit um, so we're following our own policy um, there's really good processes and practices in place um, to make sure that we're actually vetting our clients and making sure that the right people are put into the right houses. Business support reconciliations was given limited assurance. Uh, with the centralisation <coughs> within business services, business support, um, we found that the, some of the reconciliations which are about to move over weren't being done, which was disappointing. Um, that's now being uh, addressed. And those that were being done now by business support, which weren't being done previously, they were doing it, it okay, but there was areas for improving. So that's the reason we did the audit, was because the processes had moved, been centralised, you want to make sure they were working <coughs> as expected. Um, and so they're just working to tighten up their sort of housekeeping processes within there. So moving on to the recommendation tracker. So, yes, it is disappointing that uh, the number of recommend overdue recommendations has come up. Uh, and I'm going to ask Jim now to talk about the business continuity plan. So this is a high-risk um, recommendation which is now overdue. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, the, uh, the, the, the audit, um, which was carried, the internal audit, which was carried out by Sarah and the team, identified a number of deficiencies primarily around uh, bringing uh, business continuity registers together and making sure that uh, people were adequately trained in business continuity. Um, so we engaged um, a consultant uh, expert to come in and to help us do this, to do it right. Uh, and I'm pleased to say now that all the business continuity plans for the directorates <laughs> are complete. Um, uh, we have delayed um, a few bits and pieces, mainly because of um, the workload around Brexit for the officer concerned and also the uh, election that we had that we didn't expect in December. And so the final part of this will be uh, an exercise to test our business continuity plans and this will take place on the 19th of February. Thank you, Chairman. Members, any comments? Yeah. Councillor so Councillor Jennings first, then I'll come to you, Councillor. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, just a couple of points, and it's really for my comfort to, to get the... I think I know what the answer is, but the word should is used an awful lot in this report. Um, and I, I, I quote from chap, uh, paragraph 8, the workflows on marketplace should be amended. That sounds like sort of... They should be amended, but they might not be amended because somebody might not care too much. And this carries on. I'd, I'd like to see the word will be amended, um, basically, because I'm not comfortable with should, because it doesn't tell me that it's going to happen. And the other point I'd like to make is I'd, I'd like to see some will be amended by such and such a date. So we, we've got better sort of control over what's being done to make sure that those actions have been put in place and now are being implemented. Um, the other thing I'm afraid to say is obviously it's, it's of great concern that the number of um, issues have gone, you know, from one high priority, um, seven has gone up to ten, etc. And I wonder if <coughs> in the situation that we were in this time last year where the workload is um, sort of building up and I'd like some assurance basically that this is going to be rectified for our March meeting. Sarah? You wanted to make a suggestion. Well, I, I have to say, I, I raised this at my, my briefing um, and said I was very concerned. Um, what concerns me the most here is that the medium priority 
um, passed for the due date are continuously really going up and up. We're now in double what we were um, in 2019. And, um, and I'm not happy with some of the explanations which are particularly vague as to why they're overdue. And, you know, if all we're going to ever get is, oh, it's due to sickness and long-term absence, that really doesn't help us understand the problem and what they're going to do about it. What I'm suggesting, and in line with what you're saying, is that um, of those 10, and a number of them, it is said in here, um, are due to be completed very soon, um, that at the next meeting, every officer responsible for one of those overdue um, uh, issues is asked to attend this committee and explain in some detail why they cannot meet the date which, remember, they set. The way this council works, that it is the actual service area which sets when they're going to do it, and then when they find they're not doing it, they change the date. So when we have three changes of date, that's the same service area changing the date. Well, if, if all we allow is that you can, if you're not going to meet the date that you set, you can just set another one, it becomes a bit of a, a pointless exercise that we just run on. So what I'm suggesting, I hope I have your approval, is that given that most of these are supposed to be done very soon, that those that are not done by, by before the, the next meeting, or maybe two weeks before that, to give them, uh, so we can get the agendas out, those officers will be asked to report personally to this committee to explain why they're not meeting their target dates. Are you happy with that? Okay, so can we put that down as a recommendation of this committee? Because I think we do have to get a grip on uh, people at meeting their targets for getting things done. Um, and so... So can I continue yes, with the rest please. of the report? Please Thank do. you. Um, so moving on to <coughs> item 23, then review of the internal audit charter. So the internal <coughs> audit charter is one of my key documents it sets out the purpose and responsibilities of internal audit. It shows that we're independent and objective. It shows that I have unfettled access to the leader, to the chief exec, to the chair of the audit committee. And it also gives my team the access to any information that they require as part of their work. Um, we review it every year. That's why it's such a key document. Um, we're only making slight changes. I've compared it to good practice uh, against the public sector internal audit standards, which I have to adhere to. Um, and it's just a little bit more wording around any consultancy activities that I do. So the majority of the work that we do is what I call assurance-based work. They're the formal audits that we do. But if we were to do any consultancy-type work, which is quite rare, then I've got the remit to do that within the internal audit charter. Moving on to the local code of corporate governance. So again, this is another key <coughs> document for the council. It's important that we review it on uh, an annual basis. And again, we've only made some m minor changes just to reflect what's actually happening within the council um, at the moment. Moving on through my report, the corporate fraud team update continue to do some really good work. <coughs> At the March meeting, they'll be having, uh, they'll be presenting their strategy for anti-fraud work. And then towards the end of the report, 32 onwards, just gives you an update on the annual governance statement. So it's important that we deliver what the council said we were going to deliver for the annual governance statement. We're just about to start the process now to gather everybody's views about what should be in the annual governance statement going for next year. And the annual governance statement is a critical document which goes with the financial accounts which get approved by you later on in the next financial year. So it's important that you know what's going on there. And I'm happy to take any questions about anything that I've talked about now. Members? Councillor Heap. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, it's about the fraud um, update, uh, because there's an obvious investigation going on at the moment, and uh, we don't seem to have any kind of uh, mechanism to uh, see what's happening and make sure that it is happening in a timely fashion. 
And I think we do need to have control of that. And that's not mentioned here. Sarah? So when there's particular investigations, um, we're not at liberty to say anything because they are ongoing at any point where there are, uh, they are a, a serious enough <coughs> investigations, then we would bring the outcomes to you, especially if there's going to have to be a change in processes as a, controls as a, a result of that. So we're not keeping you in the dark, um, but we, we will bring stuff to your attention as, as it arises. Uh, Simon. Thank you for that. Uh, it's just the, the lengthy nature of it means mm -hmm. that it's, sometimes it's like justice delayed, is justice denied. And we don't have any kind of idea of if it's happening, when it's happening, how it's happening, and who's doing it. And there should be some group of councillors who are trusted with this information to keep it pushing forward and make it happen in a more timely fashion. Sarah? Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't know quite how to answer that one. Um, can I think about it and come back to you uh, and, and talk to the audit chair um, about the best way forward? I don't want to promise something that I can't deliver. So do, do, you, do you want me to put that on a list and uh, give you a date? And if you're overdue, add that to the medium-term overdue people. Sorry, I didn't understand what that no, was about. I, 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 I was jesting with you. No, was you, right. Okay. Uh, mem members, are we, are we happy with this? I think we, we've got what we want, which is that we want officers to start being accountable to this committee when they don't perform as they said they were going to perform. And so that we can delve a, much de a bit deeper into why reports and changes are not being made. The only thing I've still got left is the one with, where we had limited assurance. And I think that this was coming from the members as well. It's not exactly clear what we're expecting to happen to that limited assurance. It says they didn't do these things, they weren't doing these things. But what we haven't got is, as Councillor James has constantly asked for, some sort of time scale by when we expect this to be put right, so that we have a substantial assurance. Because a lot of the things where there's limited assurance is because things that should have been done weren't being done. And we don't seem to have anything in here which says, well, well this is going to be sorted out. Um, there's, oh, there are changes occurring. And so, but there, there's nothing in here that gives me confidence that we're going to get to a substantial assurance situation and very soon. So I'm looking for some guidance there. So, sorry, so, <laughs> so there, there is um, an audit tracker process. So every, uh, recommend, <clears throat> every audit that we do, we often usually make recommendations and they get put on our audit tracker. So it's important that you have oversight of that. So at the moment, you get all overdue recommendations and rightly so you should be looking at those and you're asking the right questions about that. When it's um, you also get any high recommendations so mm -hmm. in this um, report, this limited report, there was a high recommendation and you can see that on the tracker and therefore you can see when that's going to be implemented by so I thought that was the best way to give you an overview and give you um, that chance to challenge things without giving you all the minutiae. But I agree with you about the detail in the report needs beefing up to give you those assurances as well. Okay, so this will move on to the tracker and we will have a bit more detail about what they, they're actually going to do and when they're going to do it to put these things right. Because a number of these things are not huge things that you need to have lots of meetings on. Why aren't you recording properly the things you're doing. These, these are things which we would expect officers to do. Um, so do you want to say something on this? No, I, I was just going to say, like Sarah did really, that F, following every audit we have um, an action plan um, which is agreed with the um, relevant officer, <coughs> which includes um, 
the action they're going to take and uh, their deadline. So you have the high recommendation on this current tracker that you've received today. Um, and obviously there were other recommendations. Um, but I, I agree in future we'll put um, more detail about uh, what, what action is going to be taken. Okay, thank you for that. Members, can we turn then to page seven? So I think we can note the progress made against the internal audit because that seems to be working um, satisfactorily. Um, are we happy with the internal audit charter and local corp code of corporate governance? There are relatively minor changes there and I don't think there's anything for us to worry about. So if we can agree those three items, then we can move on to item eight. Final Accounts Progress Report, pages 69 to 72. Chair, ju just uh, a summary here. Um, as reported at the last audit committee, um, we've uh, closed softly at month nine to test our systems and processes for the production of the final accounts for the year 2019-20. Uh, so far, everything is going to plan <coughs> and to time, and we have obviously put into uh, this improvement plan a lot of learning and a lot of feedback that came from the external auditors, mainly about effectively um, uh, putting procedures and processes in place that when an individual isn't there, somebody else can take up the cudgels actually to simplify a lot of transactions as well and also put many of the transactions back into the main system rather than hold them as spreadsheets beyond the main system. Obviously at the next audit committee the exercise will have been completed as part of the managed audit process alongside the external auditors and they'll be able to give a fuller report as to the lessons learned and the further improvements that we've carried out. Okay. Members? Councillor Jennings. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the reason I wanted to look at the mits of the last meeting was to see if it had been minuted that I did request at that meeting that we had a full financial breakdown of the cost, that these delays in not preparing the final accounts, I wanted to know what the costs were to this council. I haven't received anything. Um, I can see the progress is being made now, but if we could have that included in your final report, I'd very much appreciate it. Nick, do you want to come back on that? Uh, certainly. Uh, I have not received the detail myself <coughs> from the external auditors, but I'll remind them to, to bring it. Yeah. I, I do think that they did give us um, a figure for their extra costs. I think we have had that, but I think you, you, we need more detail. You're, you're absolutely right on that. Can I, can I just say, Nick, on, on this? I mean, this represents a significant change from our position um, some six months ago when... Um, we were behind with things, we couldn't find data and stuff, and we look as if we're now coming right up to speed on this. But also, this is the kind of information that I would like from some of the others when they're overdue and they haven't done things, if they can give something in this kind of form so that we know exactly what's going on. Because here you've indicated the things you've actually done which is very nice to know, instead of the things you would like to do or you might do or you should do, um, you, what you've actually done to make sure that we start um, doing our financial accounts and closing them in, in the right times and in the right manner. Uh, um, but uh, this is really, th uh, this is good news um, for us because it means that we are really getting our act back on track um, to where we were a number of years ago. and. Um, so I'd say well done, well done for this. Members, are we happy with um, this to note the progress, to note the, and that month nine trial close accounts have been achieved, so the, and um, to note a fuller report will take to the next audit governance committee um, when all the trial closures activities have been done. But I think we, we will, we're now in a much better position to see where we are with our finances than we, than we were um, a number of months ago because of those rapid changeovers of senior staff. So I think it looks as if we are settling down again then and that is good news. Are we happy with those three recommendations? Okay, thank you very much. Um, just under any other business, um, a lot of stuff that's coming out of uh, from the Audit Commission is about that we should be challenging um, 
more our directors of services so that we understand what's going on, what their approach to risk in their subject area is, and what problems they see um, occurring that put the council at risk. Um, what I'm going to suggest is that at the next meeting, to kick this off as a procedure from now on, we will ask Nigel Richardson, Director of Planning Services, to come to us to explain how he sees the development of the natural England and our ability to grant planning permissions and our inability to build houses at the moment and what risks he sees presenting to this council if we, we don't manage to break this impasse. Um, I might be a bit unfair on impasse. The leader might wish to just comment on that, whether it's an impasse with Natural England or whether it's just a slow progress. Chairman, I would say more slow progress. We're, we're in regular contact with Natural England. There's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, and um, I would say it's more slow progress than no progress at all. But Okay, but I still I, I would like to kick off because we have never had a director of planning services or head of planning before an audit and governance committee um, giving us their views on the risks associated with that service area. Um, so if you're happy for that, um, I'm recommending that that's one of the things we ask for at the next meeting. And then we can carry it on with another service head um, next time. So questions about staffing, resources, um, problems they're facing and that's sort of, so that we have a good understanding of where we are with this council. Councillor Heap. Uh, thank you Chairman. There is one other thing that I'm um, not sure if this is quite the right forum and it's not about whether it's a good or bad idea. It's the new companies that are being formed. We still don't quite know what the structure is and how it's going to be <coughs> operated but there is an obvious um, dilemma here in that the company will be owned by the council who are planning from planning commission from the council and the building regulation will be done by the council so it's a self-regulating thing and then enforced by the council so there's obvious contradictions in here and there needs to be something that's much more transparent in all of that that gives us more oversight of how this thing actually operates on behalf of the residents to make it fairer okay. Sarah oh Chairman, just to come back, on, just to come back on those comments. Obviously, the Qualis is uh, is the council's company. It's uh, in the process of going through the setting up of governance at the moment. Indeed, all members have been invited to a workshop, I believe, <coughs> in early February, before it comes to cabinet with the proper uh, governance report. So, um, I feel it's premature to make those sort of comments until we've actually had the opportunity to bring the governance forward for the company. But of course, it's. Um, Councils across the country now are setting up companies like Qualis. Yeah, yes, Sam. Um, oh, thank you for that. Sam, we'll come back. Uh, yes, it wasn't a, a comment about uh, the companies yet, but there is an obvious dichotomy mm -hmm. between somebody trying to apply for the permissions from the people that they're going to, they are owned by the people who they're going to apply permissions for, who are going to enforce, who are going to regulate. So it's just a concern going forward that there is an obvious we, we, we did raise this matter at the uh, the last meeting um, and said that w that we think there may be a there may be a role for audit and governance or uh, or we need to understand who is overseeing the operation um, in, of the company in this in this area. Um, Councillor Jennings, um, can I just add on to that? Basically, overview and scrutiny, which is meeting tomorrow night, will now receive regularly reports at each of its meetings. So overview and scrutiny are looking at the process. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. I think our, our, our job is, is not actually to delve in too much, so much in it, but to make sure that the processes for checking and understanding what's going on and that it's being done in a proper way are in place. Sarah, do you want to just comment on that? So at the moment I'm speaking to everybody about what should be in my audit plan for next year. I also keep an eye on what's going through all the committee minutes, see what's happening within the different uh, outside the council as well. So uh, Qualis will be featuring <coughs> quite heavily in my next uh, three year audit plan. Luckily we've got uh, good examples um, of good practice that we've seen both at Harlow and Broxbourne where they have their own subsidiary company, so we're not auditing uh, completely in the dark, but it will be featuring on my audit plan. 
Okay, thank, thank you for that. Members, as there is no other business, I call Councillor Hadley. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Just a couple of points. The first one, I might have missed it somewhere on the line, but uh, this is winding back. We seem to be looking at the corporate risk register for the 26th of September. Last Thursday at the Cabinet, well, the Cabinet meetings, we were looking at one dated in January this year. Uh, that one also includes the, inclu uh, includes the climate risk item, which isn't the one we're looking at here. And it doesn't include the recommendation of the last, uh, the last committee meeting of this, which was to add the new companies onto the risk register. The risk register. <coughs> um, nor did it, uh, apparently it was uh, not rejected, but not included because of the risk, uh, the members' risk group. But there's no documentation that I've seen that tells why it wasn't added to the risk register. Which one, which one sorry, was sorry, which risk? Which risk Which are you talking about wasn't on there? <coughs> the, the, the last uh, audit governance meeting, there's two things recommended. One was the climate change yeah. to be added, which is. Yeah. And the other one was quotas, oh, right. which wasn't added. And it wasn't added because of the <coughs> member um, risk group. Apparently didn't think it should be, but I hadn't seen anything written down to explain to me why it was taken out. Um, I think, Chairman, I can Chairman. answer some of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, last, the, the risk register that was presented to finance and performance last Thursday is the correct one. It's the most up-to-date one. <coughs> and that included, I think, the accommodation risk as a separate side. Uh, in terms of the qualis risk, yes, it has been identified, and yes, it will be uh, added to the register, but it's going through an office process at the moment. And Monday week, I think there is a, a meeting where the updates that the Finance and Performance Committee wanted to the risks, uh, I think you remember some of them were reordering some of the risks uh, on the existing risks, and the addition of the new one for Qualis, and that, they will be added to the register then, and then that will come into the next cycle of members' meetings. Does that answer the question? I think it does. <laughs> <laughs> I probably think something else when I go outside, but yeah, fine. fine. Yeah. Yeah, but just keep saying that we, we weren't actually asked to approve mm. that that one because I think that we knew it was that you knew it was out of date by the well, time slide, it came to us. Yeah, slide, exactly. So that's why it wasn't in here that we were approving this one because it was clearly been changed in the last few days from where we are. So I think it's it's a, just a little timing thing. But you're absolutely right to point it out. Members, anything else? Okay, thank you so much for that, and we will call the meeting at an end. Thank you.